Hello, Malcolm here, Ventura Publications. This is going to be another one of our detail nitty gritty type videos, and we're going to cover the evolution of the roundels and then roundels and bars used on RNZAF types in the Pacific War. We start off with the delivery of the first P40s to the country in April of 1942. As we progress along, I'll mainly be showing photos of P-40s as this type used everything from the early war RAF style roundel through to the large roundel with bars used right at the end when the P-40s were back in New Zealand being used for training purposes. This first colour side view and photograph uh, is of a number 16 squadron P-40E and the photograph is taken in early November 1942 in Gisborne. This is the delivery scheme with the RAF type A1 roundel on the side of the fuselage. <laughs> this expression, you know, type A, type B, type C roundels, this was actually invented post-war by the author Bruce Robertson and used in his book Camouflage and Markings 1907 to 1954. But hey, it's a convenient uh, set of expressions rather than using National Marking 1, National Marking 2, etc. These roundels were painted on at the Curtis factory and the paint colours used are the American equivalent of the RAF's roundel red, white and blue and yellow, etc. So, you know, similar but not identical. Also, we'll see in the next photograph a slight variation regards the B-type roundel. Now here we see the first variation of markings from the as-delivered scheme. In Europe, in June of 1942, the RAF decided to reduce the amount of white and yellow in its fuselage roundels, and indeed the underwing roundel as well. So here in New Zealand, we followed suit so that the A and A1 type roundels changed to the C and C1 type and on the fin we reduced the amount of white in the fin flash. Now this particular aircraft is from a series of photographs taken in March of 1943 of P-40Es flown by number 14 squadron pilots in the Auckland area. This particular machine which is NZ3008 and it's uh, got the nose art um, sloppagus on it shows the C1 type roundel on the fuselage and the B type roundel shown on the upper wing. Here's another photograph taken from the same March 1943 photo shoot. This is the underside of NZ3007 and it has the nose art Magnolia Mufflewort. Notice that the fuselage roundel still has a red dot, but under the wing it has blue-white-blue blue roundels in March 1943 with the blue centre dot. Now we're moving on to roundel designs that were worn by RNZAF P-40s in the Pacific War Zone. This photograph shows Squadron Leader Fitzgerald, DFC, who commanded No. 14 Squadron on its first operational tour. This photograph is taken before the squadron departed from northern New Zealand heading for Norfolk Island and you'll see this is a freshly applied fuselage roundel with a smaller red dot and more blue in the roundel. Next we move on to a colour side view of a P-40K and its NZ3059. It's depicted as it appeared on Norfolk Island. Before number 14 squadron departed for Norfolk Island on the 26th of March 1943, the aircraft had been partially re-camouflaged. They were received in New Zealand in brown and green upper surfaces with the American version of sky, a pale green, underneath. However, in New Zealand, a blue-grey colour had been developed and the RNZAF painted this blue-grey colour over the original brown, as this was deemed more suitable for the Pacific War Zone. I'm just highlighting the wing roundel and that this is a blue-white-blue blue roundel. And extra piece of handy information, now I'm highlighting the demarcation line between the dark upper surface colors and the lower surface color. You'll notice on the 
K models in New Zealand, they were delivered with a wavy demarcation line between these camouflage colours. And when the RNZAF painted over the brown with its blue-grey, they retained this wavy edge. And if you just concentrate on this photograph, you may be able to discern the level of gloss on the fuselage side between the blue-grey, which is adjacent to the roundel, and the original green, which is underneath the cockpit, the level of gloss is slightly different. Now here we have two really interesting photographs taken at the same time, within a few minutes of each other anyway. The first one shows a P-40E inherited from the 68th Pursuit Group, still with a star on its fuselage. In the second photograph, we see an RNZAF roundel has been applied to NZ3094 and it's a roundel with the tiny one inch red dot in the center of the roundel. And in both photographs, we can see the cowling with a digit four on it propped up. So uh, I've seen the second photograph listed as being in July of 1943 on Espiritu Santo, but I'm not sure that's correct. Uh, the first photograph with the star still on the aeroplane would indicate it's earlier. However, it will be from March onwards in 1943. Interesting to see the, uh, the transition of these aircraft. Now we have some extra photos of P-40K and then M models uh, up in the Pacific War Zone. This first photo, I believe they're both um, P-40Ks, but can't be quite sure of the one in front. Nevertheless, we see the tiny red dot roundel on the fuselage side, and we see the theatre markings uh, starting to come to prominence with the stripes on the wings and the diagonal stripe on the fin rudder and the vertical stripes on the nose and rear fuselage. Still sticking with the one inch red dot roundels, this illustration shows NZ3078 and the photograph is squadron leader Michael Herrick in the cockpit of this aircraft. This is circa May, June 1943. Notice the uh, theatre stripes and what have you on this aircraft. And last of the small red dot aircraft photos, uh, we've got NZ3118, which is a P-40M, now flown by number 14 squadron pilots at Kukum Field, Guadalcanal, in July of 1943. Uh, this aircraft had previously been operated by number 15 squadron. And just to show that P-40s weren't the only RNZAF types with tiny red dot roundels, here are a pair of Hudsons flying by. We're now transitioning into photographs taken from around August of 1943 onwards. Now this first one is of number four servicing unit Kitty Hawks on New Georgia. The aircraft in the foreground is NZ3121. Notice we have the narrow fin flash. We have the large white tail area with a smooth curved demarcation line. We've got the blue center dot in the fuselage roundel. And we've also got white bars added to the upper wing roundels only at this time. The man in the lemon squeezer is Major General Baraclough, the General Officer Commanding the New Zealand 3rd Division, commonly known as the Coconut Bombers. Now still with the plain blue-white-blue blue fuselage roundels with the yellow ring around them, this is uh, NZ3066, which its pilot crash-landed on the 13th of September 1943, flown by a number 17 squadron pilot, Sergeant Donald A. Williams. Uh, the aircraft is from a period where individual aircraft code letters were carried. These are probably light grey, in this case A, but I can't quite be sure. And notice how the rear fuselage vertical a theatre marking line is slightly more abbreviated and shorter than the one in the previous photograph. I do like this photo. It's just unfortunate that we can't see if it has bars on the upper wing roundels. Very interesting nevertheless. A rare example of an aircraft with an individual letter on the rear fuselage. This is a poor photograph, but I'm including it anyway. It's from the collection of 
the late Anthony Hoff, who served with Number 18 Squadron on its first and second tours on P-40s. Now, 18 Squadron's second tour was between January and June 1944 on Espiritu Santo, Bougainville, Guadalcanal, then back to Bougainville again. Uh, I'm including it because it appears to show a fuselage roundel bar painted over top of an individual aircraft code. Same with the aircraft behind it, although the shape of the codes looks rather similar. So anyway, someone out there may have extra information about this aircraft, and it does also have four kill markings painted on the fuselage side. Now we're into the Roundel and Bar marked aircraft. This is NZ3177, as operated by number 4 servicing unit, or rather maintained by number 4 servicing unit, and flown by pilots of various squadrons, uh, between November 1943 and March 1944. Standard characteristics, it's got the big white tail with the curved demarcation line, narrow fin stripe, it's got the more abbreviated theatre stripe, behind the cockpit where it uh, stops quite short coming down the fuselage and we've got the yellow ring on the roundel going all the way around the roundel. This tender indicates the white bars were added later rather than all painted on at the same time. Moving on now to the next iteration of P-40 bars where they get a little bit bigger. First, I want to point out that the photograph here and the colour side view are not of the same aircraft, but they do indicate the same point. Now, this aircraft is its P-40N NZ3152, and it's maintained by number 2 servicing unit between October 1943 and May of 1944. Again, the bars are added after the roundel was painted on. Uh, the pilot in the photograph is Flying Officer G.M. Robertson standing beside his Kitty Hawk at Torokino on Bougainville, and he is with Number 18 Squadron. Note how if we look at the white of the bar, you can see that it's definitely painted over top of an older vertical theatre stripe. Really good photograph showing that point. And moving right along, here is the next iteration of RNZAF P-40 markings. Notice the uh, white tail, it does not extend below the tailplane. And you'll notice that yet again, the bars about the roundels just keep on getting just that little bit bigger each time. Now the aircraft is NZ3184 and it was maintained by number 2 servicing unit between December 1943 and May of 1944. This aircraft actually gained a probable kill uh, shooting down a zero uh, during a Rabaul fighter sweep in the hands of number 16 squadron pilot, Flight Lieutenant F.J. Adams. Now we're covering the last iteration of P-40 markings up in the Pacific War Zone. Uh, after that, we'll spend a little bit of time looking at aircraft operated back in New Zealand by the operational training units. So, here we've got NZ-3259 with the personal marking Leslie. It was maintained by number 2 servicing unit between May and June 1944. Leslie was the highest serialed RNZAF P-40 to see combat in the Pacific, and the name Leslie was applied on both sides of the nose. As the threat of combat with Japanese fighters diminished, the unofficial rules regarding personal markings was relaxed, and nose markings began to appear. Points to note, it is the most abbreviated version of the white fin and rudder and uh, horizontal tailplane. It has the chunkiest bars around the roundels and uh, the chunkiest bars under the wings as well. You'll notice that the yellow ring around the fuselage roundel does not go over top of the white bars. This tends to indicate that the roundel and bar were applied as a single entity rather than the bars being added later. And this last photograph is the well-known one of NZ 3220 Gloria Lines and again it's got the most abbreviated tail section markings and the chunkiest bars around the fuselage roundel. 
Now, before finishing up, we're going to look at two aircraft operated by operational training units at home in New Zealand. This first one is NZ3067, and it did not go up to the islands because it was damaged in an accident in New Zealand before the P40Ks and P40Ms were flown up, so it remained in New Zealand with number two operational training unit. It's painted in the blue-grey overall scheme, and its letter group FEH, I believe, is in light grey. Notice that it retains the red dot in the centre of its fuselage roundel as well. No need to overpaint it if it's remaining at home. And it has the blue-white-blue -blue wing roundels. And to finish off with, here is NZ3081 while being operated by number 4 Operational Training Unit at Ohakia from September 1944 onwards. So this photograph is probably late in 1944. It had been operated up in the island's war zone and was credited with two half kills. So it would have been uh, fairly battered by the time it got back to New Zealand. And it has been repainted and the fuselage roundel has been reapplied as one featuring a red dot. And that concludes this video about the RNZAF Pacific roundels and their evolution. Please do hit the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already, and uh, if you're of a mind to, you can buy me a coffee or hit the super thanks button. Every little bit helps, and... Uh, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.